Hey guys, welcome to the Live Big Find Your Magic podcast. Welcome to this episode. I'm so excited about this episode because this episode is with a friend, a friend of mine that has not been a friend of mine for that long, but who I have confided in in my life. And she lives all the way across the country in Florida. I want to welcome my friend Rachel to the podcast. Welcome, Rachel. Thanks for joining Hi. me. And Thank you for having me. what's that? Oh, thanks for having thanks me. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm so, so, so excited to have you here. I really am. Um, and I asked you to be on this for um, quite a few reasons. And we're going to share that today. But I wanted to share a little bit about how I met Rachel. And this is, again, I say this in my podcast in the you know, all my episodes, my favorite thing is to share where I met my guest. And so the last couple of years have been really, really hard on me. And I decided to join a group, a couple, I don't know, maybe it has been two years now. Um, I decided to join a group called Peloton Singles Over 40 group because I have Peloton, I'm over 40 and I'm single. And, uh, and so this group has just been so, so amazing. And Rachel is in that group. And now Rachel would post and I would just be like, oh my gosh, I totally connect with this girl. I totally connect with her. She's amazing. And then one day I texted her, I messaged her. I was like, can I text you? Will you be my friend? I'm not even kidding you. This is not a joke. That is exactly what happened. And Rachel was kind enough to have a conversation with me because I just needed some advice, some girl advice. And um, I just really, really love her. And she's just freaking amazing. And she's also a nurse, which obviously there was that connection. Um, and she's my age. We turn the big five zero this year. And we're going to discuss a little bit about that later on, mm-hmm. but I just wanted to say, I just wanted to give kind of the backstory on how we've connected and I've just followed her journey and, um, and she stayed connected with me and checking in on me. And I'm super grateful for that. And I just wanted to, I wanted her to share her story on how she's found, you know, magic in life. Um, because again, we all have these stories and, and not many people know about our story and how we got to where we got and what we've gone through to get there. And this podcast is really about that is really highlighting people and their stories and how they got to where they are. And most people won't say that they have found magic, right? Because it's this kind of, I don't know, sparkly unicorny thing. But the truth is, There is always something, something magical about life. And there is something magical that, that she's doing, that she's roped me into doing. No, it didn't rope me into, but I'm, I'm a little behind in this. And we're going to, again, we're going to talk about this a little bit later. So Rachel, I want to ask you a few, three questions that are like ice breaking questions. You don't know these questions unless you, this is the podcast before, but it's a brand new podcast. So we're going to go with this. All right. So. The question, question number one is what brings you joy? Like first thing that comes to mind, I'm going to actually change this up a little bit. What brought you joy this week? Instead of like, what brings you joy overall? What brought you joy this week? Like one thing. Okay. So well, I've been sick this week, so I've been <laughs> stuck at home okay. and I work at home. So extra stuck at home. Um, but when I started to feel better, I went out for a walk on the beach. I live, I live like a three minute walk to the ocean. Um, and that really just felt like a turning point in me starting to feel better. And it's partly why I live by the ocean because Mm -hmm. I feel drawn to it and it's my, it's my place. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and when I, and actually I really didn't feel like going for a walk on the beach when I went a couple of days ago, but I was like, I need to get out of the house. The sun is out. It's been kind of chilly here, even though I'm in Florida, it's still winter a little bit. Um, So I kind of made myself go out there. And actually when I went out to the beach, there were probably like, I think I saw a hundred starfish. And I'm telling you that never, like I've lived here for about two and a half years. I've maybe run across a starfish once, one starfish, Uh like uh one little lone starfish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like this, I don't know, 
starfish explosion, there was like hundreds of them and they were all alive. So I like played with them and rescued a few, put them back in the water. But I was like, you know what? This is like the universe rewarding me for getting my butt up and up and going outside. And yeah, I love that. See, that's so magical. It was awesome. I love it. It really actually was magical. Yes. I have to say. And you thought you like had to take a step back and go, I, I appreciate this. This is great. Yes. It's just like whenever it. I'm out there, whenever I'm out there and I like want to see dolphin, I just kind of put it out there. I'm like, I need to see a dolphin today. And I usually do whenever I think about it. They come say you're hi. So, <laughs> you're so my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I love every bit of that. Okay. So that's question number one. Now, um, okay. question number two is, do you believe, and there's no wrong or right answer. Do you believe that everyone has a purpose in life? No wrong or right answer. I have to believe that. Yeah, I do believe that. Okay. Um, I think figuring out what that is, mm-hmm. is that's the secret, right? Okay. There's this quote, there's this quote I love that says, you know, um, the secret of life is to find out what your purpose is. And then uh, what is it? And then the purpose is to give it away when you find out. Like the purpose of life is to find your, find out what your gift is yep. and then give, then, then start giving it away. Anyway. Um, I feel like nursing's kind of, is kind of that, you know? Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I don't, I feel like, I also feel like I'll always be a work in progress and that yeah. maybe it can change. Yeah. Um, I was in a really bad car accident when I was 19 years old. I was on the interstate mm-hmm. and I actually went underneath um, a semi truck at like, you know, 60 miles an hour. They had to cut me out of the car. Um, and I made the front page of the paper. Ooh, that's one time Rachel was famous. <laughs> not, not how you were planning. I can make right. The front page. Yeah. I, and I remember, th- I remember thinking it was so weird because the caption on the picture said, um, it was a picture of my car under the truck, like totally all crunched up. And I remember it saying woman survives crash. And I was 19 and like, you know, second year of college. I was like, why is they, why are they calling me a woman <laughs> in the paper? <laughs> not a woman. Well, it was so strange. But honestly, I, I should not be alive. Like every window was crushed. They, like I said, they had to extricate me out. The only injuries I had, I had lots of cuts everywhere mm-hmm. and, you know, glass shards everywhere, but I had a broken clavicle mm-hmm. and a, uh, like a cerebral hematoma, like, but not even enough to, yeah. no permanent damage, no permanent disability. Wasn't in the ICU. was only hospital mm-hmm. in the hospital for like two days. Mm-hmm. Like, Wow. hardly injured. And so, and it's like, you know, and I was a kid then and everyone was like, yeah. Oh, you know, you're here for a reason. It wasn't, right. you know, it wasn't your time. And I was like, ah, whatever. But looking back on that and doing what I do for a living. Yeah. You know, I was going to say, did that lead you into becoming a nurse? Did you, did you want to be one before then? Or, or were you driven no. to that because of your experience or was it just it just coincidental. <laughs> no, it was really just coincidental. Medicine and healthcare was always what mm-hmm. I was interested in. Mm-hmm. At first I thought I wanted to like do research, you know, like find the cure for cancer, yada, yeah. yada. Yeah. But then, oh, I hate research. Like I like thinking about what to research, but the mm-hmm. whole mundane part of it, that right. wasn't going to be for me and being stuck in a lab, that wasn't really for right. me. Right. So then I decided I was going to go to med school. Mm-hmm. So I was on that track for a while. Um, and then I ended up having to drop out of college because I couldn't afford to keep going. I had to pay mm-hmm. for it all myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I took a little break and during that break, I ended up getting married and having two kids. And, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was a little older and wiser by the time yeah. I went back to school and I didn't really want to live for my job. Yeah. Like you have to, when you're a physician. Yeah. Um, so I ended up doing the, that's how I ended up going into nursing, but I was I always interested in, in yeah. nursing. Now, I once I became every, I, a neurocritical care nurse, mm-hmm. all my experience from, you know, my head injury and the things that I went through, I could definitely relate to my patients because I actually couldn't see for like 12 hours. It was my occipital wow. lobe that got yeah. damaged for a little bit. Um, and I remember the CT tech telling me to hold still, you know, like, mm-hmm don't move, hold still. And I couldn't see her, but I was like, okay, I'm holding still. And I went for my repeat head CT the next day Mm -hmm. and I recognized her voice, but by then I could see. And I was like, oh, you were my tech yesterday. And she goes, yes. And girl, I could not get a good CT on you. You would not lay still. And I remember I felt so awful because I 
I thought I was trying really hard and sure, I was staying sure, still. So sure. it gives me grace for, gave me a lot of grace for my head injured patients that were combative or confused yeah. and, you know, tried to hurt me and didn't listen yeah. because yeah. they can't help it. They can't help it. Yeah. They gotta, because of your own boob experience. Boob. Yeah, I love yeah. that. I love that. I love, and the fact that, that, you know, um, I think that nurses in particular, I don't know if you agree with this, but I don't think that nurses, I think that nurses feel like they, um, have a purpose or they're finding their purpose in the beginning. And then I think that they are typically, especially nowadays, um, typically feel like they don't necessarily have a purpose. So that's why I say there's no wrong or right answer because there are plenty of people that I run into that say, I don't have a purpose. I don't, I don't think yeah. everybody has a purpose. So it's interesting. I, uh, because we come from the same, um, <laughs> the same cloth, um, that you agree that there is a purpose and that it's an, it's a, it's a process, right? It's yeah. I and feel I like it's, in, it's in flux. You find it, you have to share it. I love it's that. It's in flux a lot. The process is in flux and sure you get disillusioned when you're a nurse, what you think nursing is. And then the reality of what <laughs> nursing is, is it's not the same. Yeah. Especially yeah. now. Um, Especially now. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We had a little bit of PTSD. Um, okay. <laughs> so, okay. My third question, and actually this is great because you did share your story. So it saves me from later. Um, <laughs> okay. So this might be a little bit of a challenge. This question is a little bit quirky and challenging, but I, I, I like the question. So I'm going to ask it. Um, okay. So what is your favorite thing about human connection? Because like I said, I like to, to share how I've met people in life and where the story started and it comes down to human connection. So what is your favorite thing about human connection? Like one thing. I love the, I don't know, just that feeling of common of commonality that we end up with. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if I meet somebody who's on the opposite end of the spectrum with what they believe, you know, politically or morally. Mm -hmm. Um, I like meeting people like that who challenge me to think outside the box and challenge my beliefs because I feel like you can really get pigeonholed in one way of thinking. And Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure, you know, social media right now Mm -hmm. and the media itself really tries to pit us against each other a lot. Um, so I think it's important to kind of have a diverse group of people in your life that you connect with that kind of keep you in the middle, right? Right. I don't think that there's one absolute true religion. I don't think there's one absolute true political party. I feel right. like, you know, the truth is always somewhere in the middle. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have to be very careful about um, who we follow and, you know, yeah, people are trying to brainwash us all the time, right? Yeah. It's yeah. true. Yeah. So, so the thing about human mind. connection is just yeah. that I think, yeah, at the end of the day, no matter whether you love them, hate them, um, the sharing of the energy and that we're all, that we're all connected. Yeah. I find amazing. Yeah. Like, let me, Oh, can I tell you a quick story? Like, yeah, please crazy. do. I love it. Yep. So, um, I have been going to this little, where I get my nails done. It's like literally three minutes away from my house. Mm-hmm. And it's this little old Vietnamese couple. I've been going there ever since I moved here and I got a phone call like, like a month ago it was before new year's. Cause I had an appointment to get my nails done. So I was actually going to go off. Right. And I got a phone call from the office that said, Hey, do you have an appointment tomorrow? And I said, no, I have an appointment the next day. And she was like, well, you know, this is their daughter. We're having a family emergency. We, we may not be open on Thursday when your appointment is just call and before you come. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, is everybody okay? And she's like, well, she didn't really tell me what was going on, but she sounded distressed. And, mm-hmm. and I was worried because, you know, they're cute and I know them. So I called Thursday and actually they were open. The husband is who always does me. His name is Jabo. He was there. He's like, yeah, come on in. So I come in and he starts telling me, he said that his wife is in the hospital, that she had a stroke. Mm. And I was like, oh no, you know, I was like, why are you at work? <laughs> yeah. you know, but yeah. like, that's their culture. Right. And, um, yeah. and he tells me, but it's okay. My daughter's, my daughter's with her and she's a doctor. She's an ICU doctor. You know, she's from Orlando. Mm-hmm. And he had told me before mm-hmm. that his daughter was a doctor in Orlando. And I lived in Orlando for 16 years before mm-hmm. I live in St. Augustine where I live now. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden 
I looked up at his little license that, and his last name is Vo. And I was like, wait a minute. I go, wait a minute. Is your daughter X? Yeah. He goes, yeah. I go, are you kidding me? I've known that girl since she was a resident. Yeah. I've known her for years. I know her. Yeah. And he got so excited. He FaceTimed her. Why? Oh <laughs> she was like, oh. And she was like, oh my gosh. Hi, Rachel. And I was like, listen, I live down the street from your parents. Let me know if you ever need anything. I'm up here now. And it was just so wow. random. And it is I... such a small world because I'm, you know, 90 minutes away from there now. And uh-huh. what are the odds? Right. Right. Um, right. Exactly. So it was, the odds are that you, but we're all to it. <laughs> we are all connected. That whole six yeah. degrees of separation thing. It's for real. I and that's it. what I, that's yeah. what I love the most about. Yeah. Human. I'm with you on that for sure. So many things in life that you go, God, how, how did that happen? And it, there's so many things like every day, there's something that has to do with human connection. And that's why I love it so much is exactly uh, for those reasons, those stories, those experiences that have happened to me that you go, wow, that was supposed to, I think that was supposed to happen that way. You know, right. I just, I love that, the fact that you shared. Yeah. I have a friend who says there's no such thing as coincidences. And if right. you think about it, yep. I think she's right. Yeah. I, I totally agree. I totally agree. I think that the coincidence, I think that we could come up with a different word than coincidence, but um, yeah, I totally agree with that. Okay. So those were the ice breaking questions, but those were great Ooh. because you, you expanded on that. I love the it. Ice has been broken. <laughs> the ice is definitely broken. Okay. So, so share with, share with us a little bit about your history. I know obviously when you were 19, you had a car accident and here we are, um, yeah. but share a little bit about your, your history and, and where it's led you up to today and, um, what we're going to talk about. So again, I mentioned that Rachel and I both turn 50 this year. And um, she texted me and said, I am going to be doing something and you're going to join me with it. Or I said, I'm going to join you with it. So share with me a little bit about your history and, 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 um, you know, anything that you want to share that, that you feel might be an inspiration to, to get people to, you know, where they're at today. And like, Okay. The goals that we have set for the year. How about that? I'm leading that okay. in. I'm leading into it. Okay. I'm leading into the goals. <laughs> um, so, all right. Uh, well, you know, I'm a nurse. Um, I have two, two daughters like Anna. Mm-hmm. Uh, mine are a little bit older. Mine are 26 and 23. They don't live with me anymore. They're, you know, up and out of the house. Okay. Um, and kind of how I ended up where I am living by the beach um, was not always well, it was always a dream, right? People say, oh, you know, I'd love to live by the beach. Um, I actually was married to my husband for almost 22 years. Um, and he, unfortunately, he was a firefighter. He got sick and he passed away a little over four years ago. Um, and he was sick for about six years before he died. And so up to that point, I lived my life very, you know, I'm an ICU nurse, so we're we have control issues. Um, I created my little perfect little Rockwell family, you know, we lived in the suburbs, we had our kids, we had our life. Um, part of the reason why I think that was so important to me was because I I had a very traumatic childhood and never had that kind of stability. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was very important to me to kind of have my kids be able to go to the same school in the same town because I moved around a lot when I was little and I didn't like it, you know, so I'm, constructed this life with, you know, with my husband, he also didn't have a very stable um, childhood either. So, you know, we had our little suburban dream house with the pool, the two kids, blah, 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 you know, and then out of nowhere illness struck. And of course, at first we didn't know it would end up taking his life. It was a gradual process. Um, But when you go through something like that and you watch somebody who was Basically, you know, he said, you know, I've lived my whole life using my body. He's a firefighter on the squad, did all this special. He's the one that cut people out of cars and mm-hmm. did hazmat, you know, um, climbed up buildings, repelled, all that stuff. His mind was always with him till the end, but his body, you know, ended up giving out on him. And that was so hard to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was always, you know, he was always trying to get me to plan for like dream about the future. He 
he had big dreams. One minute he'd wanted to move to Fiji. And I was like, what are you nuts? There's no hospital in Fiji. We can't go to Fiji. You know, one minute it was Montana. Like he had all these grandiose, um, sometimes unrealistic dreams. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was kind of the balance to that because I was like, wait a minute, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What about, what about X, Y, Z? Yeah. Um, but part of kind of my transition for myself, you know, and losing him and having to basically start my life over again. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really what you end up facing. You know, nobody plans to end up being a widow at 45 or a divorcee mm -hmm. in their forties either. You know, it's similar. Mm -hmm. Um, one thing that I made a promise to myself, which is kind of a promise to him was that I was going to try really hard to keep getting outside of my comfort zone, because that was something that he kind of would always force me to do. I'm a cancer. That's my astrological sign. And like, I'm the definition. I'm a homebody. I stay in my shell. I'm not super adventurous. I like security. It's my thing. Um, so about a year after he died, I was kind of facing this professional and personal, I don't know, crossroads. I needed to sell my house because my kids were done with it. It was too big for me to maintain on my own. Um, and I wanted to move closer to where I was going to work, where I worked downtown Orlando. Um, but to pay for something closer to where I worked downtown Orlando, even for rent was going to be way more than my mortgage. Um, and before that happened, I ended up buying this little place up here by the beach. I bought it as an investment property. I was going to kind of do the Airbnb thing. And I would come up here once or twice a month to furnish it and, you know, get away and became like my little sanctuary. And so one day I just had this epiphany. I was like, you know what? I feel so good when I'm up at the beach and why am I going to pay more money to live? Not that I, you know, a lot of my work colleagues will end up watching this, I'm sure, because I'm still dear friends with so many people that I worked with. Yeah. And I love the organization that I worked with, but I wasn't growing professionally, sure. you know? Yeah. And I had felt that frustration for a few years, mm -hmm. but I wasn't able to do anything about it because at that time I was the only one working, carried all the health benefits, you know, I was, I was stuck there, yep. but I wasn't stuck there anymore, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, why don't I just move where I'm happy? Sell the house. Yeah. I can get another job somewhere. I'm a nurse. Let me, let me move. Yeah. And people who know me have to know how scary that was because yeah. I gave them my notice with no job lined up, Yeah, you know, no plan for what I was going to do. But I was just like, look, I'm selling my house and I'm moving to St. Augustine and um, I'll figure it out and I'll figure it out. Yeah. And that is not Rachel. I've never like quit one job without having another job first. Right. <laughs> it's just yeah. not what I do. Yeah. So that's what I did. I, sold my house and I moved to the beach and, um, I do something very different now professionally, yeah. professionally. I'm not super, super fulfilled right now. Mm -hmm. I went back to shift work, but mm -hmm. it was a job that I could get at the time. And it actually allows me now I'm back to doing the, you know, the three twelves a week and I have yeah. four days off a week. Yeah. So I got into paddle boarding and I yeah. was able to focus on my health and fitness, yeah. which is yeah. something that I have never been able to do, mm -hmm. you know, in the past. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm like, I'm in the best shape now that I've been in probably my whole life, like yeah. even, even better than when I was in high school. Yeah. And that's, um, still surprises me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. No, I get um, that completely. But I've really been able to kind of find this work-life balance. Now mm -hmm. I'm at another crossroads and that I've been doing that shift work now for about two and a half years and it's time for me to try something else. Right. Um, now my, my, the last kid that was on my health insurance isn't on my health insurance anymore. So that gives me a little bit more yeah. options to open up, you yeah. know, career wise. Yeah. So I'm kind of, I'm on that cliff of what the next yeah. leap is going to be. And I'm yeah. still, you know, I'm still trying to get brave enough to, to make the leap, but I'm, I'm getting right. closer every day. Every right. day I'm a little bit closer. Right. Right. <laughs> well, you know, you can do it because you've done it. You know, you, you do. stepped out of your comfort zone big time and you've done it. So like when, when the, when the cards show themselves, you know, they, yeah. But you know, awesome. and losing my husband really, it's, you look at, it does change your perspective. At least for me, it changed my perspective on life. You know, wow. I didn't want to wait until I'm 75 to move to the beach when I might, you know, need a new hip or not even be able to enjoy yeah. where I am. So it's kind of like, 
someday is today. That was my motto. I was like, you know what? Someday is going to be today. Instead of saying someday I'll try paddle boarding, I'm going to do it tomorrow. Someday I'll move closer to the beach. I'm going to do it now. So that's kind of how I've tried to live my life since then. I love that so much. It like makes me teary because it's It's scary. It's so scary, scary, but it's, (laughs) <laughs> but but it's the same same thing you said like you know I you why, why wait like you know yeah. I think that also getting to this age you I, I obviously your you know your experience with your husband has made you you know take a look at your perspective of life differently clearly I mean it has to and then when you reach a certain age, you're like, okay, so how many more of these years do I have? You know, what am I going to look back and am I going to regret the things that I didn't do? Right. And then you could just sit in that for as long as you, as long as you can, you know, you do, and unless you just say, okay, this is scarier than, you know what, we're going to do it. And then, and you know, it always, it always works out. It always ends up being better than we expect, right? It's making those scary decisions on life and doing things that you wouldn't normally do. Clearly, I mean, you wouldn't have left your stable job and, you know, moved to the beach without having something lined up. If, you know, if you didn't take the risk and look at you now and like you, you know, you've, you, you carry yourself light and airy and happy and balanced and, you know, and, and the fact that you're still, that you still want to grow, you know, and, and you have this next phase in life and next chapter or whatever is super inspiring because most people, most people that I know outside of, you know, I don't know, social media world and business life and Mm -hmm. um, don't necessarily. And that's part of the reason why I wanted, that's part of the reason why I show up all the time is because I want, I want others to feel that way, to, to know that um, taking risks and, and stepping outside the box is really challenging, but so rewarding versus sitting back and not feeling like they have a purpose or this is what they're supposed to be doing, or this is they're set doing this forever. And there's just so many people that are like that. I think, I think nowadays with, you know, with this pandemic and um, it's shifted people's perspectives more than it has, you know, before that. But um, I just wish that people would see that other side that like, you know, it's worth the risk. It's scarier than, you know, what it's, but, um, taking that leap can be the best decision you ever made, you know? So I love it. Can. And you have to know that you might, you might oh, fail yeah. too. That's, Fall on your face you know. for sure. We, we, we recovering perfectionists have to always remind ourselves that, you know, for what, if sure. You, Except if you mess up, yeah. it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Accepting the fact that, you know, this could totally fail like your move, right? You, you could, this have, could have totally failed and you could have not found something and, you know, had to have said, well, maybe that wasn't the smartest decision. Maybe I'll be a waitress. Adjust, right? <laughs> but there's always a lesson. Oh, that's how I view it. Like there if is. there's not going to be, if it's not going to be the most amazing thing ever, there's always going to be a lesson in that. And I've learned that in mm-hmm. the last few years, big time. If I do something Um, of course my goal is to, to make it happen. Right. But plenty, plenty, plenty of times it did not. And so it's like, well, what's the lesson in that? So that's how I view the, the failure is that there's always a lesson. It's not really failure. There's just, there's just a lesson in it. So, um, okay. So thank you for sharing. We have to talk about the list. Yes. That's exactly where I'm leading this into. Mm -hmm. This is exactly where we're headed here. Um, so now that we have Rachel's backstory, let's share with everyone what the future holds in the next. Well, okay. When do you turn 50? I turn 50 June 27th. Okay. So you have, I think that's before you, right? You have less time than I have. (laughs) I have more time than you do. Okay. okay. So, well, my rule for myself about this list. So, okay. Basically, share with the list. Share the list. Share this. Share the story. It's a list of uh, fifty things to do 
the year I turn 50. So I'm not going to limit myself to, I don't, I'm not going to have to do them all before my birthday. Cause I feel like there's no way like right. there's <laughs> writing, coming up with 50 things that you want to do that, that need to be, you know, either new or something that you really enjoy or whatever. It was hard. It took yeah. me like a week yeah. to come up with everything. And, yeah. um, now I still got to get working on it because it's sure, a lot, of course, but, of course, but yeah, I'm going to give myself the whole year. Okay. So the list is 50 things to do outside your comfort zone or things that you haven't done. Right. It was things that you haven't done. Things you haven't done. Or I think one of the, like I put horseback riding on there and I've done that, but it, it's been so long. Okay. Like so there's I want to do that again. Still do things that we've yeah. been forever. But it doesn't need to be that you yeah, want but to it do. Can't be like, it can't be like, you know, I don't know, stuff that you do every day. Yeah. Already. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. 50 things that you want to do the year you turn 50 that you can cross off and say, I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. Yes. Right. Yeah. So share with us some of the things that have been uh, put on your list that, that, um, the audience might, um, enjoy, feel inspired by, or okay. just say, okay, I get that too. Like, yeah. So some of the things are, I tried to do a mix of easy things and harder things because, okay. you know, mm -hmm. um, so some of them are like new restaurants that I want to go to that mm -hmm. always wanted to go to. It still just haven't made it to. Yes. Um, I live in Florida. I've lived in Florida since I was four. Mm -hmm. I've never been to the Keys. Oh, okay. And yeah. everybody looks at me like, what do you mean? I'm going to go to the Keys this year. Perfect. Yes. Um, I also, what did I put on there? So I live on the East coast. Um, I want to spend a day where I watch the sunrise on the East coast and the sunset on the West coast in well, the same day. You can watch sunset over here with me. <laughs> oh, I was thinking of West coast of Florida, but I guess I could. Oh, the West coast of Florida. The oh, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, you could do the same thing. I could. Yes. You could plan um, it that way. You could make it bigger. That would be. I, should, I need to put months. meet Anna in real life as one of my. <laughs> As one of my 50. <laughs> right, exactly. And you can knock two things off at one time. We can watch the sunset over here and you can watch the sunrise over there and we can meet in real life. And meet you. And then, yeah. Oh, and so double dipping. Two. I'm, Beautiful. I am allowing double dipping on this, you know, for sure. <laughs> I, love I love it. So you, um, you came up with your list. You, you finished I did. your I came list. Up with the list. Yeah. Some of it is random acts of kindness, you know, mm -hmm. to do for other people. I mm -hmm. want it to be about giving, you know, giving back. Yeah. Um, well-rounded, a lot of personal, personal growth. Like, um, okay. I think I put on there, I want to read 10, 10 new books and okay. books for fun. Not, you know, yeah. Not, not self -help books. books. I've been in the, like, I've been in the self-help book yeah. uh, for a couple years now. Yeah. That yeah. would be, that would be self-help here. <laughs> Time to get back to some fun books. And, yeah. um, I have a masterclass subscription that I oh, don't use enough. Okay. So I put that on there. Nice some master classes. Yeah. Um, okay. And, and it's on uh, there to make it, making a career move is on my list too. On the list. It's time. Yeah. So, I love so yeah, it. it's, it's extensive. I have a lot well, to do. 50, 50 is pretty extensive. 50 is pretty intimidating. Not going to lie. 50 is pretty intimidating, but like you said, you've created some easy ones, some ones that are like no brainers because you haven't done them and why not do them this year? Right. right. So those aren't necessarily ones that you had to really kind of rack your brain for, but I'm sure there are plenty that you did. So I will tell you that I am just starting this list because I said <laughs> I was go I was going down this road with you and, um, I really wanted to do this podcast interview because I needed the inspiration to, to really sit down and start this list because yeah. And when's I, your birthday? I don't, what's up? When's your birthday? November. Oh. So mine will, mine, you know, is at the end of the year. So it's kind of perfect. I have time to, to complete them. <laughs> and chances are, let's see, we're only a few weeks into January at this point. Um, chances are I probably have crossed off one, maybe two things. Maybe. I don't know. I have to look at the list now. Um, but I am super inspired to create this list and will be writing this list down for the next two weeks, right? You said it took you two weeks to... To complete a couple yeah a couple weeks you know and like here and there when I would yeah you know, yeah, have yeah a little bit of time yeah. to think about it you know and um one thing I 
so I used to keep journals for my kids and every year on their birthday, I wrote them a letter and I gave it to them when they turned 18. Oh my gosh. Now, it's not perfect because there are some gaps, sure. especially in the, in the babies. When I gave her hers, she, yeah. she loved it, but she was like, mom, there's like, you know, how many years here I'm missing? <laughs> I was like, listen, <laughs> I'm human. I'm human. Someday I couldn't you'll find the journal. You'll understand, you know, I couldn't find um, it. Oh, but I, I want to so write them. I want to write them letters for when they turn 50. I love that you know, so much. I may not be here anymore at that point, or I might be, you know, senile crazy, who knows, but right. I, I feel like coming from the perspective and I'm going to wait till I'm 50 to write those, you Got know, it. to them. Yeah. Um, so that was what I thought of that I thought would be pretty cool because they actually miss, they miss that they don't get those letters anymore. Oh my gosh. You know, they're like, you're not going to write me these anymore. I said, oh. well, maybe I'll write them write you something in a card you know yeah 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 you know? oh and um, it's so memorable to them I love that so so much I'm and I'm gonna write a letter people that take I'm that. gonna write a letter to myself for when I turn 65 oh oh that's a good one yeah because that's right around when you where you should be slowing down right I don't know yeah. if I'll ever be able to retire but I'm gonna say it depends on who you are. I will, I will give you an example. I will give you a story, an example of story, and maybe she will listen to this. I don't know, but my mother turns um, 73 this year. And I got a text this week that said, I tripped and fell playing pickleball and I broke my finger. Oh, well, just so her finger. The thank apple goodness. doesn't fall far from the tree here, but she's, you know, 73. And now she's like picking up pickleball. I so. love that. <laughs> I, I love that. I know, I know. So, so you know, I mean, granted, the agility is not the same as you know when you were sixty-five. Think of that, like how young you are at sixty-five on this in this story, right? So, sixty-five, maybe you won't be slowing down, but that's like so much time from here and there. I love it. Like that's such a cool. It feels like so much time, but it but won't you be. know what? You know, yeah, right? I don't know. I don't know. I love the letter idea. I love that you share that because um, now I'm like, I wish I would have done that. My kids are, my kids are 15 and 18 now. I guess it's never it's, too late, right? It's never, it is never too late. Yeah. No. Yeah. And like I said, it's, it was, there were years missing for yeah. sure. But, yeah. you know, when they were little, it was mostly about them and things that they liked and, you know, things that they said. And then, you know, when they went through the teen years, it was, it was, you know, right. here's what it's like to be the mom of a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you read that. They read that later. They go, oh yeah, that, that was me. Oh yeah. Well, awesome. my mom's got the patience of Job. I love that. Right, I love right, it. <laughs> right. Hey, they appreciate you more now, right? Because <laughs> you hey, share hope. Here's, here's hoping. Yeah. Oh no, they, they were, they, I remember Raina put a like, put it on her Snapchat. She was, oh my gosh. she was very very touched by that. So oh, it was so cool. Awesome. I love that. It's a cool idea. It's an idea that I give to all, like all the, the pregnant mamas I know, right? Like I'll give them a journal and be like, this is for you to write them a letter every yeah, year. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that so much. All right. So write a letter, everyone write a letter, to write a letter to your kids on their birthday. I want to hear it. We want to hear it, share it, share it, share it so that we know that you're going to do this. Um, okay. So I appreciate, I love the fact that you shared all this. I'm super excited about the list. I'm super excited that, um, where you're headed. Like I want, I can't wait to see what, what's next for you. And I appreciate you as a person. And I appreciate you jumping on here on a podcast, which is not what you normally do in your week. First, first podcast interview ever. But that is on the list. I did see that <laughs> on the list. <laughs> hey, you might as well knock that Take one credit. up. Right. Right. Yeah. Anybody could do that one. Get, get on a podcast. <laughs> if you need a podcast, here's one. Reach out to me. <laughs> Call Anna to check Call it me. Off I'll list. make it happen. If it's on your <laughs> list, I'll make it happen. <laughs> Anyways. All right, guys. So it, would you like any last words to share? Like any sort of inspiration for finding, you know, a little bit of magic in your life that you may not think that is magical, you know, a joy, some, some, um, um, well, I, one, one thing that I have put into practice is I write down three things every day that I'm grateful for. 
every day, Mm -hmm. no matter. And sometimes it's, you know, I'm grateful for, for my cup of coffee in the morning or, you know, that it's not cold outside today. You know, it doesn't have to be anything big, but those are the, those are the things that do make life magical. It's not big stuff. Yeah. It's the little, it's the little things that we take for granted. And if you just take the time to think about it and notice them, yeah, you just, I don't know, it fills your cup and makes you feel more grateful for things that you already have. You know, right. we're taught to just always want more, strive for more, make more money, mm-hmm. you know, get more stuff. But if you just stop and look around and, yeah. and see the pretty flower that's growing on your or porch the starfish. or, yeah. or the starfish at the ocean, or exactly. even if you don't, if you're not blessed to live at the beach, like I am, yeah. you know, just, um, a bird, you know, like I noticed, like there's a woodpecker that lives around here once in a while. Mm-hmm, I, mm-hmm. I see him, you know, just yeah. connect yeah. with nature and, um, look around you. There's, there's so much to be thankful for, no matter how, even if you're having a shit day or, yeah. you know, you were just crying five minutes ago, there's always something to yeah. be grateful for. Yeah. I love it. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you so, so much for doing this. And again, I look forward to seeing, you know, you crossing those things off the list. I look forward to me creating the list and crossing Get them your off list as well. Time. We can cheer each other on at the end of the year. Yes. That's what we did. Oh, and like, I was, another thing I was thinking of, like, it's such a great idea. Like even people who are younger than us, like if you're exactly. turning 30 or 40, exactly. I feel like it would be a great thing to do to make a list of however many things you're yep. turning. Totally agree. Cause it would have been a lot easier for me to make my list if I had been doing it already every 10 years. Right. <laughs> Think of how much more you would have accomplished, not necessarily accomplished, but like recognize the fact that you did it, right? You probably have already, you probably did those things and didn't really check them out. It's not as in, right, not as intentional. You know, this is making it exactly an intention, which, you know, how they said, um, I don't know, did you pick a word for 2022? I picked, no, that was, that was a thing. Well, I did. And it was actually this generator thing, like online where you're like, it was like, you click the button and it tells you your word. Listen, I did it twice and it got the exact same thing. So, and my word is intentionally. So, oh, perfect. Then there you go. Yeah, the list is it was hundred like percent that. It's intentional. Yep. That's my word for it. the year. So I love it. I'm a, I'm Every, a no coincidences, right? It all comes together. I'm a really big fan of that word for sure. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining us for this podcast. I hope that it was inspirational and I hope that you took away some really great ideas for your own life and please make sure and share it. Subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe, subscribe to the YouTube channel and subscribe to the podcast. If you're listening to it on one of the podcast uh, platforms and review and share with your friends. If you, if you know someone that needs this, please share it with them. So thanks again for joining us guys. Bye-bye. Bye.